First up is I Care A Lot, which came out on Netflix, and it stars Rosamund Pike, Peter Dinklage, Aza Gonzalez, Diane Wiest, and Chris Messina, as well as Isaiah Whitlock Jr., which is always a fun person to see pop up in things. I saw the trailer for this, and I was actually pretty excited. Rosamund Pike is this con artist, essentially, like a very well-groomed, high-glamour con artist. I always appreciate a female-led con. She is essentially taking advantage of older people who are in need of, or who she claims are in need of, a court appointed guardian because they cannot take care of themselves and then the rest of the film is sort of her picking on Diane Weist's character and that might not have been the right target for her to prey upon so again concept wise I was like all right this isn't bad it's it's it actually makes me very sad because elder abuse is a very very sad thing and it's very scary when people who can't take care of themselves are taken advantage of and Rosamund Pike I think brings a she does this in a lot of her roles she brings a coldness to them which can sometimes be very great and sometimes feels very warm one note and for me this felt very one note so the rest of the film is the playing out of how this person does not go down as easy of a mark as they thought they would be I don't know why this is getting nominated for awards and performance stuff I think it's maybe an indicator of how weak this year was in general just wasn't well executed it felt really really long it was two hours long it was poorly paced I wanted this film to be better than it was but I think unfortunately it might be an example of like a, a you get what you pay for one where you aren't paying a lot extra for this. Like if I had had to see this in theaters, I would have been very upset because I would have been very bored out of my mind. At halfway through, I was asking myself, what more is there to do? If this had been a tight hour and a half and I think faster paced and a little more dramatic, I would have been more comfortable recommending it. But as it stands, I don't think this is necessarily worth your time. Or the other way I could have seen it going is like a long burn con, right? Where it's actually like a mini series on a Showtime or an HBO or something along those lines but to have it or even a Netflix but to have it play out as it is just felt compromised and that's not what you're looking for when you're looking for viewing things now of course we're in a drought of content but even so I'm reticent to recommend this film I am only going to give it two and a half out of five and then the next film I have is called Supernova and it stars Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci and they play a couple and they are also you know speaking of people who can't take care of themselves this is in the trailers and implied but Stanley Tucci's character is starting to suffer from dementia and memory loss and it's about them as a couple dealing with it. I am torn on this film. I think that both Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci are very good actors and I think that they are fine in this. I feel like their chemistry reads a little bit more as a friendship than it does a romantic chemistry. And then it brings up this weird issue for me of, you know, diversity in casting and representation. And I'm like, well, you have two very, very straight actors. Well, maybe not very, very straight. I don't know what their lives are, but who to generally speaking, uh, to my understanding, straight, mar both married to women actors, but sexuality is a spectrum. Either way, you, you have them playing a romantic couple and not every romantic couple has to be fiery chemistry, etc. whatever on screen. I think there are plenty of any sort of pairings of couples on screen that have the chemistry together that doesn't have to be you know steamy romance but it's a little bit sad to see these roles not necessarily go to queer actors especially because you know there aren't as many opportunities for queer actors at present if we were in a position where a gay actor could play a straight man in a straight couple and that does happen occasionally and nobody would say anything about it and it's like okay great those opportunities are abundant then fine, go ahead. Have everybody play everybody. You're an actor. You have that within your skill set. Like if you're a good actor, you have that within your skill set, at least hopefully. It shouldn't matter. But the fact is we are not currently in a position where the diversity of roles that are available to straight actors are being made available to queer actors. And so that to me feels upsetting and problematic. Also, overall, the film, I think, is preying upon the subject matter more than it is the actual structure of the film. I am someone who is very upset and moved by anything regarding memory loss and, you know, Alzheimer's and all that stuff because it's something that impacts my family directly. And so I can recognize, I'm getting a little choked up talking about, it, you know, I, I get very emotional about the thought of it, but I can also pretty easily see when I'm being sort of manipulated by a film and not in a subtle way where they're relying more on the fact that like, hey, hopefully the audience has some, maybe some personal experience with this issue as opposed to we are generating feelings and performances for you to tap into. So even if you had no experience with that type of diagnosis whatsoever, you would be able to dip into this. And I don't think this film successfully accomplishes that, which is a shame. Again, I really like the two of them. I just... 
think one, it's also a bummer to watch right now. You know, it's only an hour and a half. And again, I know I've been complaining a fair amount recently about films running too long, but it's also felt a little bit long. There are some very sweet acting moments in it for sure. It also definitely felt like a Gimme an Oscar film. And I don't think it's going to get recognized for that. That's totally fine. Most Gimme an Oscar films don't actually get recognized for those things, but it leaves a little bad taste in my mouth when I see a film and I'm like, oh, this wanted that. But I know that there are plenty of people and I'm going to go ahead and maybe guess older people who are such fans of the two actors that they are going to watch this film anyway. Go ahead, have that. I would definitely recommend you watch the trailer beforehand. It's one of those films that I think gives you a good sense of it. I personally am only going to give this three out of five and that's out of just sort of recognition of the fact that yeah, Stanley Tucci and Colin Firth are both very good actors and give decent performances in this. And the final film I have this week is called Flora and Ulysses and it's out on Disney Plus. It's very different from the other two. I am not the target audience for this one. It is definitely a family friendly, fun film that is skewing more towards children. I think there are plenty of films that are family friendly that have a lot for adults and there are a couple moments in this that I was like, there's a lot of very sort of comedy moments that are feel like they were written and, and implemented by people who are very involved in the comedy and improv world because the cast is full of people who are from the comedy and improv world. Makes sense. Those moments were fine, and I think the rest of it, I, so let me back up a bit. The story is there's a 10-year-old girl. Her mother and father are having some relationship issues. She's uh, obsessed with comic books, and I really like seeing a female character obsessed with comic books and not necessarily, I don't, I didn't feel like, she, you know, maybe I would have to watch it again for this, but I don't want to watch it again. She wasn't like picked on or made fun of for being a girl who likes these things. There was more of a question of anybody shouldn't have their head down in a book too much. But she's played by Matilda Lawler, who I thought did a decent job. She's a little bit serious. She felt pretty serious in this, which is something that is hard for, I think, a kid to maintain. And I almost was worried for how serious she was, but still enjoyable. Allison Hannigan plays her mother. Ben Schwartz plays her father, which was a weird thing to watch just because I'm like, I don't think of Ben Schwartz as father material necessarily I, at present, just because he seems very young and buoyant and whatever it may be, but who knows. The rest of the cast is rounded out by Kate Micucci, Danny Pudi, Bobby Moynihan, Anna Devere Smith, and Nancy Robertson. And so Flora, the girl uh, who I've described before, she, you know, as I said, her parents are maybe going through a tough time. She's not dealing as well with that. She loves comic books. She discovers a squirrel that gets sucked up by a robot lawn vacuum thing and either gains powers or already had powers and it's slight spoiler it's not a metaphor for anything it actually has it seems to be a supernatural squirrel and so the you know the squirrel then uh, integrates into her life and there are events that follow and blah 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 it's a kids family friendly film you can guess where this goes nothing is super shocking in this film I thought it was very sweet the character herself Flora talks a lot about being a literal cynic and I was like oh, okay but I think that the film could have dipped into the overly saccharine and didn't so I think there's a nice sort of level of balance there but overall it definitely feels like a film aimed at younger children not too young necessarily but I do think again as a parent or as an adult watching this I'm not I'm not sure if any adults without children aside from film critics like myself are going to be watching this but if you do it's at least positive and uplifting but I guess just be aware that it's not necessarily aimed at an older audience I think again if you have a kid who's in about that age range it's fine and you're not going to want to claw your eyeballs out after watching it I think the biggest complaints I had were about mostly the CG animation it's fine but it's just very CG and also just there's not as much brain fodder here there's definitely action and zaniness and some some actually pretty sweet moments but it's not asking you to do a lot of work and maybe that's what you need right now either way I personally am going to give it 3.2 out of 5 with the caveat that that is more of a review for if you have children and are watching this 